Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West Audio Body Shop. And this week, it's our first annual Demo Demo Derby. We're going to have Cliff Zellman and Uncle Roy Yokelson analyzing demos that have been brought in or that you send in. So please send them in. It's all about the production. Don't be shy. Send them in to ewabshop at gmail.com. That's our first annual Demo Demo Derby. So join us Monday night at 9 in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And join us in the chat room. It's going to be great. We'll see you and your demos there. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. <laughs> Demo Demo Derby. Demo Derby. Yes. Put on your seatbelts, everyone. Yeah, man. get on oh, your man. best man. monster truck voice. Uh, <laughs> we first we have to apologize for being a little late tonight. Uh, George had a slight slight scheduling snafu, but we're here now, and it's all working. Yay! Oh. There's Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff Zellman joins us. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. Joining us from Dallas, Texas, and joining us from New Jersey is Uncle Roy Yelkelson. Uncle Roy in the East. Hey. Uncle Roy with some yeast. That's right. All right. Here's the ground rules. Of course, we asked everybody to send out uh, their their demos this week because we want to. We, what we really want to do, and we can talk about this a little bit before we get into it, um, is that. We want to talk about the technical quality of people's demos. There's a lot of people producing demos out there. Uh, you know, sometimes people go to a weekend thing and they get a demo and they think it's like, hey, now I can be a voice actor. Well, um, <laughs> the, these two gentlemen joining uh, George and I tonight, Cliff and, and Uncle Roy, are two of the best audio voiceover audio engineers in the country. And uh, they do demos and they listen to demo. Cliff, you, you listen to a lot of demos, don't you? I, I love listening to demos. In fact, just uh, the, the beginning of this week, wait, I'm sorry, the beginning of last week, I ran one through Facebook and had some wonderful response. Quote from the client, oh, my God, what are we going to do? They're all great. <laughs> so, and that, that's really what I want. You know, when that's I a bad problem in, to have. Yeah, it's a, well, it was a wonderful problem. And, uh, um, yeah, they spent a couple of days. In fact, I think they're, they're still kind of working on it a little bit. All right. Now, Roy, now tell us a little bit more about what exactly you do so we can gain, you can gain some credibility here. I'm a man of many hats. I'm a voiceover coach, a voiceover demo producer, but in, in my past life, uh, produced radio and TV commercials so, and sat through many well-directed and poorly directed sessions, so I've seen it all. And Cliff and I produce radio and TV commercials for a living. And those real mixes, that's what the quality of your demo has to sound like. It has to, you know, old school demo is people would bring you your spots that, that are airing and say, here, put my demo together. Because it actually demonstrated what they could do. So now in today's, uh, you know, voiceover uh, world, where people have their uh, demos, you know, they come to us to produce their demos. Copy has to seem like real copy or be real copy. And the mixes have to sound like air quality uh, mixes. And that's where we uh, shine. Exactly. You know, back in the day, and we've been around for a little bit, um, listening to demos was a basically a history of what somebody's been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, interesting thing was is that demos didn't always sound exactly the same. 
because at that time, the voice talent wasn't really responsible for the final mix. So they have a great performance. They do a great spot. They do a great read. That's really what casting agents, directors, uh, engineers, producers were looking for less than the actual overall cohesiveness, wonderful quality, but the game has changed. And nowadays it's really got to be everything. You know, it's got to sound great, uh, great reads, great casting. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. All right. So why don't we get into the meat of the matter? Here are the ground rules. We will do our best <laughs> to not uh, be somewhat critical of, of everybody, uh, of, of the performance. We're not necessarily critiquing the performance this evening. We are going to be looking at uh, how a demo was produced, how somebody's, what were the, was it the right selection of spots? Was it the right script for that particular person? And what was the audio quality? Because we're discovering that, you know, sometimes people produce de demos themselves and you can tell. Uh, and then you've got a lot of professional demo producers who tend to like to put their own mark on things as opposed to the voice actor's mark. So uh, why don't we get into it here? Uh, first one here we have, you have that one lined up. The first one I mentioned, George. Yes, I do. All right. Now this is an audio book demo. So let's give this a quick listen. And uh, when I say shut it off, then we'll shut it off. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> That's, That's the rules. It's Those are the rules. It's go. Deal. All right. Here we go. An audiobook demo for Daniel Dors. From Caliber. Jake was dusty from the ground and his hair was must from the hood. But his young face wore a look of determination. Clayton seemed unimpressed because he pointed to Jake and laughed. Well, if it ain't the dude with the strong punch. Run along, sonny, or we'll give you what the sheriff got. Jake craned his neck. I'm going to kill you, Clayton. I'm going to kill all of you. Maybe you can't count, boy. It's six to one. And hell, your gun's still in your holster. On three, Jake said. Clayton sent the man standing beside him a look of confusion, even as Jake began counting off. One, Clayton shook his head. Dude's loco. Two, Clayton's men dropped the canvas sacks full of money they had stolen from the bank as their grips grew tighter on their guns. Three, six guns rose their barrels aiming at Jake as his hand flew to his holster. Then six fingers began tightening on six triggers as six bullets flew from Jake's gun and six men fell dead at his feet. From the war, the war, the war, the war, the war. All that's right. my favorite part. That's my favorite. Yeah, part. really. So, um, okay, so let's let's go adding to the ground rules. It's supposed to be anonymous. So, how am I going right. to, and how am I going to avoid playing slates? Uh, well, because we we've listened to him, and that was the only one that had a slate, okay. and I took off the other slate. <laughs> okay. Sorry that about that. Said, that being said, moving on. Uh, I thought the performance right. was fine. So let's get that out of the way. The performance was definitely not of issue at all from an audio. No, absolutely person. not. Um, but you know, no, I thought the performance was terrific. Yeah, yeah. For, so, for my for great my storyteller, Cliff yeah. first. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead, Roy. Roy, Roy first. Oh no, I was going to say for my money, uh, the editing was a little too tight. Took out all the breaths. This is you're going to find this uh, typical tonight. Uh, took out all the breaths and then closed up the spaces rather than letting some of those, letting some of the writer's intent kind of hit you and lay on you. And you get to think about it a little bit instead of next line, next line, next line, next line. So I thought the pacing was off. Uh, the recording quality is fine. I thought, you know, performance was good. Uh, you vocal, char vocal character sounded fine. Can you know what? Can we go back and listen? Uh, is it possible just to hear that again and kind of really zero in on, on what Roy just said about spacing? Because uh, I sure. felt that there was something maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but I didn't know really what it was. And when Roy said that, it was like, okay, maybe let's, it's that. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's go back and, and, and listen to that. And, and again, I mean, the, the, the performance is great. And I thought that the voice was wonderful. And, yeah. and since you guys are all a little bit of a handicap on just pure sound quality, since you are listening over Zoom, and I don't have as much of an opinion about actual demo production, 
I'll just give my little two cents about the pure mastering of it, you know, like how it's leveled and all that, because I can hear right. a little idea. bit better. So we uh, can't maybe that'll that. work. Yeah. Okay. So um, here we go. I'll play a little bit more again. You guys tell me. Just when a little to, more. Just tell me when to cut it off. Okay? And you could turn your audio up, George, a little oh, bit. Oh, I had it cranked. So that's one of the problems. Oh, <laughs> the I'm levels sorry. were pretty low. Never here mind. Never mind. Lizard Chronicles. My new fiance Betty, and I were sitting on the couch, watching the Westminster Kennel Club dog show when she looked over at me and casually said, My first orgasm came from a dog. As I sat there stunned, trying to control my reactions and collect myself, I had two immediate thoughts. One, now I know why my dog likes her better. And two, I wish this were the worst thing she'd ever told me. From Wick. The man leaned his bicycle against the tower. It's the tower. G-rated. <laughs> hey, well, this is this isn't this isn't cable. It's the internet. We can do anything we want. Was that that was a different section because I yes. heard yeah. volumes changing a little bit. George, we're gonna talk a little bit about mastering because I think that this could really use that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now in I'm looking at the audio right now in Twisted Wave analyzing it and the rms comes out to minus 25 which is pretty low for audiobooks yeah. we really yeah. like to see closer to minus 20 db for for an audiobook and especially when it's a demo when you want to be very present and have you know a nice volume um so it doesn't get buried or get lost um you definitely have to make sure that the mastering is on point you know so overall levels on average are definitely pretty low yeah Oh, what about anything with any? Because um, we can't see the waveform or any peaks. Was it? What? what the, does it sound like? It's been. Com- does it look like it's been compressed the, uh, at least a little bit? No, not really. It looks pretty much raw. And I and I listen to a lot of audiobook raw recordings because I make a lot of processing settings for people. And this looks like a pretty typical, yeah. you know, unprocessed audio. So it looks to me almost raw, like it's never been mastered. Well, you you can't do that with a demo. It's got to, you know, especially with an audiobook demo. It's got to be it's got to be mastered so you can show people that you know how to master this stuff. And or generally, that, people are going to do their their own audiobook demos. Generally, yeah, I would say generally because mainly for budget reasons. But that seems they're to be probably the anyway. one of the easiest ones to self produce because all you need to do is pretty much re- read some Talk of a book. And, yeah, oh, right. uh, well, the, uh, yeah. The other the other thing about that is. Uh, since there was usually no production, uh, you could afford to go to somebody to, to have yeah. you know have them help you with mastering, Good even point. directing, uh, for your for your demo. Good point. You know, uh, they're not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, they're not writing you an original script or four yeah, or pro- five. Probably not much sound design. Probably right. no sound design. Exactly. You know? Okay, well, I mean, that was a good start for an audiobook right. demo. Yeah. Oh, we, we also have to mention, because, of course, we forgot to do that at the top of the show, because uh, George was a little late, but we won't hold it against him. Uh, we'd like to, of course, thank VoiceOver Essentials, uh, VoiceOver Extra, and now the sponsors of our, <laughs> of our actual bandwidth, so you can watch the show on Ustream. Our good friends at Edge Studios, who George, you happen to work for. And I'm laughing to myself as I listen to your audio glitching out due to yeah, bandwidth. Me too. Right on the word, right on the word, uh, <laughs> right as you said, bandwidth. Bad it bandwidth, started dropping right? out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So make yeah, usually now this is this is, the, this is this is the first time we've had any any audio glitches with Zoom, which is kind of are, are the kids at home, Dan? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I seriously, are the kids home? Yeah, they're home, but I, I'm they're they're, they're not on my router. <laughs> All right, just make, they're probably uh, you know they're probably leeching up some internet right now. Okay. <laughs> probably, you look nice I'll and smooth. Shut there, it off, George. It's good. Okay, cool. All right, uh, let's next go one. move on to the next one here. And I'm going to set them up so that if you do want to play it again, it'll start uh, restart at the start uh, instead of uh, playing in the middle. Which is because he wanted Cliff wanted to play at the start last time and it didn't. So, okay, here we go. Introducing the new value meal at KFC: snackers, sandwiches, popcorn, chicken, and more. The food you love at a price you love even more. Life tastes better with KFC. Life is about the small things. 
is the things that make a Camry a Camry. Toyota, moving forward. Things are sure changing fast. While every car used to get filled up, more and more getting powered up. That's why your Touchstone Energy Co-op is making sure affordable electricity is always on hand, no matter what change rolls into town. Touchstone Energy, looking out for you. Wachovia is now part of Wells Fargo. We're now one team that's nationwide and twice as strong. So while it's business as usual for today, you can look forward to even more great things ahead. Ready to make a big change? This is your year, and this is your sale. Hurry in for super savings starting Sunday at Sears. Fortunately, though, there are Napa Auto Care Centers where professional technicians give your vehicle the preventative maintenance it needs to improve your gas mileage and possibly avoid major problems down the road. Napa. Get the good stuff. Introducing the new value meal at KFC. Snackers, sandwiches, popcorn, chicken, and more. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So who's you first? You can dance to it. You can dance to the... We were bopping. Yeah. Good Good music selection, I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, who go wants ahead. to start? Go ahead. Cliff, you go ahead. I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, yeah. I thought the, the demo was pretty good. Um, I thought that I would have liked, if I was listening to this as a demo, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it's my mom. Be nice. Um, <laughs> I would have liked to have heard a little bit more variety. Um, mm-hmm. I pretty much heard what the artist was doing. Hold on. I think that's my, my youngest daughter is at grandma's house right now. Oh, we're so, all dealing with daughter Roy. Problems. Roy, take yes. over, and I'll pick up on the next thought. <laughs> I, I will mute your mic in the in the interim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, Ma. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Roy. No, I I, I agree with Cliff in that uh, it's not that it's a uh, this person's a one trick pony or anything. I, it does show some range, but uh, it's somewhat limiting, somewhat limited range and uh, spot to spot. Um, the voice, you know, the voice quality. Uh, may be too similar. Um, and, you know, if they've heard the first spot and the second spot's a little samey and the third spot's samey, they're, they're kind of done with you. They're, not, they're never going to get to, which brings up a point about sequencing. If Your strong stuff has to knock them over. That first spot's got to be a killer. That first spot has to... So I'm looking at your bug eyes there, Dan. Um <laughs> <laughs> first spot has to be a killer and so make them want to hear the second spot and if the second spot is different enough okay they'll stay for the third spot but this was a little samey uh i think uh first couple of spots was that where you were going cliff yeah um it was i mean it was again it was all good and it, yeah, was, it was all good. certainly within the guy's wheelhouse yeah. um but a lot of times you know um sometimes talent say well you know, if they don't like this part of my demo, maybe they'll use me for this part or, you know, to break it up a little bit. To me, the number one single most important thing about a demo is that it's got to be entertaining. And from the minute it hits you, uh, again, another, you know, popular belief is that the casting director knows within six seconds if you're the one for the job. But you also have to consider that if you catch their attention, the better chance is the more varied your demo is within the genre i mean i'm not saying you know all kinds of different things going on in a demo but to keep the listener's attention and to possibly if not this job the one tomorrow or the day after or the day after and the only way that the casting director or the director or producer is going to get that far to hear all those options is if it's entertaining and yeah. really that's 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 the key is that no matter what the demo is it has to be fun to listen to yeah. I listen to tons of demos and I love it. And the ones to me that are the most entertaining are the ones that I don't expect, are the ones that change up the copy, are the ones that put their talent and their artistry, which is what we're paying for, uh, into the script. Give me something different. Give me something that sparks my imagination and shows your creativity. Yeah. Now, J.S. Gilbert, who's not in here, but he's in the chat room. He's, he's always with him. He's like looking around everywhere. Uh, he was saying that it doesn't sound like it was actual broadcast spots, which I would tend to agree with. Uh, you know, it's, it's what does gotta that mean, be, though? Well, well, that's the thing. And, you know, and, and Cliff <laughs> and Uncle Roy can describe that. I'll, here, I'll, I'll describe it. I'll describe okay. it real quickly. If it's United Healthcare, if it's American Airlines, 
If it's Southwest, if it's McDonald's, it's not an aired spot. When I hear a demo start with, we at United Healthcare, okay, it's a script. It's, it's you know, a stack of scripts that somebody has. Uh, to be a little bit esoteric in your choices is not a bad idea. But when you break out with the nationals, and we've all heard nationals, and we've all worked with nationals, or we aspire to work with nationals, this is killer stuff. And you know it, and you hear it. And, yep. I, you know, and when I hear ah, a, yes. a good, a good, not, not absolutely blow me away, but when I hear a good VO with a dad, Emma doing United Healthcare, American Airlines, uh, Home Depot. You know, the, they're trying to emulate, which is fine, which is good if they can pull it off. But you know what? That's a that's a big monster yeah, ball. That's a good. <laughs> that's a really good point, right? Because you don't try to you know don't, don't BS a BS or a BS or as <laughs> yeah. they say, right? I yeah, mean, don't exactly. try to don't try to fool the casting director out of the gate into thinking yeah. that you did the McDonald's yeah. spot. Because yeah. they're going to know who, probably who did McDonald's. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the other thing about McDonald's is many, many people have booked a McDonald's spot. True. I just finished somebody's demo and they sent me their McDonald's spot. But the, the particular performance, in my opinion, was who cares that you can get two sausage McMuffin, you know, uh, with egg for, for $3. Uh, there was nothing in the delivery. Okay, it's a spot that's running. But there was nothing. There was no wow. There was no pizzazz. There was nothing. So I had to redo it. But isn't, but isn't, that, the, isn't that the direction these days? Go get yourself a McMuffin with two eggs and sausage for two ninety nine. Yeah, Not limited. Yeah. Isn't that like this? Isn't that what they're looking for these days? Well, oh, that's oh, that's oh, very funny. The the, 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 the the original delivery of that was for uh, Lotto. Hey, you never know. Right. That's, that's a guy named Coulter Rule who's still around, and you know, so that's a style. But want to get away? Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. It's what we call a deadpan. Um, yeah. Now the, the the question becomes. Who picked those spots? Was there an actual demo producer here? Was it the, the the person who who did the demo, and was it the right spots for that person? You know those sorts of things. Was he directed in this, or did he just cut a bunch of scripts and you know that sort of thing? I mean, I would tend to think that he was probably somewhat directed on that. I think that the and this is going to sound weird and and don't get me the wrong way, but but the less I hear in the performance and the delivery, the more I hear a director trying to mold somebody into what either that director thinks they should be rather than letting that person just be themselves. And when I hear a very nice, pretty read that sounds fine and I'm hearing a director and when I'm hearing something that's really kind of off the wall and bizarre, something that gets my attention, that keeps my attention, that I know would spark an interest in my clients as well as further down the road, the guy driving down 75 or 101, listening to the spot, will it hold their attention and will they think, you know, it's entertaining also. So when I hear a nice, clean, beautiful demo, it kind of shies me away of what is the artist going to bring to this. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave this and then we're going to go to a break, right? Um the from a sound quality perspective um and maybe this doesn't matter as much as i think it does but it sounded like a just a mono mp3 of relatively low resolution so what i was hearing probably wasn't a whole different a whole lot different from what you guys were hearing over mm -hmm. zoom it just sounded pretty flat it didn't have that full fidelity sound i want it to be like this sounds awesome i'm hearing it in super quality headphones i'm hearing right Fire, it should be fireworks, you know, and it was just, yeah. it sounded like it was squashed down. And Cliff, you know, Cliff, when you're mono. doing, when you're listening to demos and you're doing casting, what are you listening on? Uh, uh, headphones, laptop speakers, your new fancy speakers? Well, my new fancy speakers. Well, of course. All right, nobody can afford yeah. those though. But I mean, the typical casting director is listening on. Probably going to be listening on the laptop on their little uh, so eight it, inch crystalline so speaker. It's got to, it's got to come banging out of that laptop. You know, if it sounds good on the laptop, it'll sound good on the big speakers. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, in that case, it doesn't matter as much because it's coming through low fidelity, small yeah. speakers. So that spot yeah. would sound almost the same through a laptop speaker as it would through headphones, you know? So, I mean, that's, those are things I'm listening to when I'm listening to it in stereo on my headphones here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I well, think I'm wondering if some people, 
I'm so I'm wondering if some people send a mono file or a low res file, you know, like a 128 stereo rather than a 320 because it's going to send uh, it's going to take longer to send or t- longer to download. I don't know, I don't know if that's still an issue, Roy. Right? I'm sure it was. I would hope not. Ago. I would hope Yeah, not. I hope so too. Yeah. Um when I hear a demo, I want to hear it, man. I want to hear yeah. good stuff. And also I want to talk a little bit tonight about how similar a demo is to an audition. To yeah. me, yeah. they are the exact same thing. Even more critical, the audition is an example of what I'm paying for on the audio end. Yep. So um, I know there's all there's been great discussions and great blogs about how important is your audio in an audition. In my opinion, in the level of people that I have auditioned for me, I mean, you know, the great AFCON people, the BO Friends people, and not just people around the country that I've been working with for a long time, I know your reads are going to be good. So I'm really looking, are you ready for this? 51 percent of my decision is audio quality what do you think about that Roy on an audition I spend a lot of time cleaning up other people's audios to send in better sounding auditions some of my students and you know somebody who I manage sends me their audio I make sure that's top quality audio before it goes out because because I think casting directors are uh, listening that way okay yes the performance has to be there Yes, it's it's almost a uh, understood that this better be a killer read. Now, what does the audio quality sound like? I, I think just, one more think, thing before we cut this off because yeah, I know we need yeah, to. Yeah. But the the yeah. it Matt, we don't know who's listening to it. But if we do know who's listening to it, that could help. I mean, if we know the buyer is listening to it, they're not going to know from from audio quality usually, and they're not usually going to be listening to it in an actual studio. But if a producer who does the casting, like in your case, Cliff, is listening in a studio, then you know sound quality is paramount. But for my for my dollar, make sure they all sound good. Yeah, <laughs> they should just yeah. all sound now, good. Now, Roy, when you do, okay, go ahead. I know you need to take a break, George. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take a break here and uh, and reconnoiter, and yeah. uh, we're gonna look at a few more of these and uh, get the opinions, of course, from our experts because there's lots of questions that that come up around demos aside from just listening to them. And of course, the idea of auditions is going to be a show for another night, which should also be kind of. Yeah, fun. we will. We definitely will do hey, that. Oh, I would love to be in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll Check be doing that out. There, there's one we can put on the calendar. Drew. That's right. Okay. Anyway, we'll be right back here on East West <laughs> Audio Body Shop. Uh, you know, if you got questions, write them in the chat room, and we'll try and get to them as the show goes on. Uh, this is East West Audio Body Shop. Where are you going? Stay where you are. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the East West Audio Body Shop. Ah! Snails like it too. (laughs) Why have we never run that? I just, I never, it just came. I had a little, I had a friend over, and he said he saw the picture on the wall, you know, of the SpongeBob, and he was like, You had, you've met him? It's like, met him. He's been right here next to me. Oh, and then man. I showed him the YouTube, and I was like, oh, my God, I forgot. He did a drop for us, so I grabbed it and threw it in. So yeah, it's only, It was like over a year ago. Like almost <laughs> it was two like years a year ago. Almost two years ago, yeah. Wow. Yeah, really. But it still holds up. It's still fun, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move on here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I just want to mention one other thing, yes, of course, if, it, I, if I can think of it. So, uh, Cliff, because you said um, the, the uh, demo... Yeah, or you're going to Audio about quality? yeah, uh, uh, is as important as the audition. Uh, I, what I was going to say, I don't remember exactly how you said it, but I was going to say the demo is like a pre-audition. 
you know, that's exactly the, what it is. because the demo is what's up there on the pay to play sites and what you send out. And first thing they hear is the demo. If they like the quality of the demo, then you can do your custom audition and, you know, book, book your gig. Yeah. All righty. All right. Let's move on to the next one here. This is, this is somebody's character demo. So this Uh-oh. has some interesting quirks to it. So let's <laughs> play that one. I hope so. <laughs> Check it out. It's showtime. Faster than a bargain hunter on Black Friday. I wonder what the poor bunnies are doing this season. Yeah, hi, Kay. Can we get some holiday scratch tickets? We ran out of stocking stuffers for the big kids. We'll take whatever you got. Santa's orders. It's pretty urgent. Trying to compile these files into a format that is accurate and complete could take one million years. Well, it's at time again, mates. Time to stock up on premium entertainment at rock bottom prices. I'm a dog. An outlander dog. All right, all you red dots, listen up. Why are we red dots always used for sales? Are you kidding? We're famous. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Travis, this is your father. This is my real voice. Check it out. It's showtime. Good job, soldiers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, it I, I get to go for it. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, go, go. go. Yeah, well, he he is he is showing a little bit of range there. A lot of those characters sounded somewhat the same, but from a technical point of view, because we're not going into the performance so much, right, right, as much as saying that well, perhaps this type of thing could fit here and this th- type of thing could fit there. But you know, other than that, you know, the guy's you know the greatest actor since Sir Lawrence Olivier. Um, anyway, uh, the, the the thing with this is one, there was a couple of characters that sounded the same. Uh, they did jump around a little bit making it sound, you know, giving it lots of contrast, which is important. Uh, Some of those sounded like impersonations more than characters. Some of them sounded like impersonations of characters that are like on the Simpsons and stuff. Right. Exactly. (laughs) And, and then there was some of it was produced and then some of it wasn't. Good. I want to jump in on that. Go for it. I actually like that. Okay. I liked I liked hearing the roughness. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the sequencing, which I think needed a little work. Um, a couple of the characters did sound similar, bringing back uh, characters one and seven and one so on and so on, jumping around. But I almost I, I was kind of I was let's say I was entertained that that it was rough and the edits were rough, and to me it sounded like a collection of work. And it could be a collection of work over a year. It could be a collection of work over 10 years. But if I would listen to that and I am casting for outrageous characters, funny characters, I don't do anything with cartoons or animation. But if I'm looking for a goofball or something like that, I would put that guy's demo to the right. And, and it's interesting because it broke rules. And I found that to be, I found that to be attractive and I found that to be fun to listen to. Um, Certainly, it, it could use a little sequencing, um, but as far as polish or lack of, you know, sometimes I work really hard to make something sound rough and vice versa, you know, so I like that in that demo. And I like the fact that it sounded original and it sounded different. Yeah, sometimes and it sounded like the guy was putting out. And if I would hire him, I think that I could trust that he would really talk for me and really try to make different and do something it's easy to make a lot of demos sound really really good you know if you sit yeah. in a studio and record one guy in a studio for two hours i mean one microphone nothing changes when I, when I heard that some of them were a little bit lower resolution different production qualities and because of that to me they sounded more authentic mm-hmm. so you know okay fooled me i'm hearing a history and if if it was you know, uh, on purpose done that way. Bravo, man. Guys, I have to have a producer to be able to create something that sounded like that yeah. uh, intentionally. But I liked it. I, th- I thought it was good. Right. Yeah. Uh, I agree with the, um, I like that some of it was produced and you want to hear the raw. You want to hear what, what the guy's voice is, maybe what the recording environment sounds like. You can't hear it when it's hidden under production. Um I, some of these people, like this guy, you know, let's face it, Cliff, not everybody's a direct good director like you and I. Uh, so some of these people, you'd say, boy, if I could direct this guy, uh, you could really get, you know, you could really, uh, he could really, uh, you know, top 
the stuff that's on his demo. Maybe he's better than his demo. You know, maybe the producer of the demo is not, maybe animation or characters isn't, isn't their strong point or something. But I, you know, I enjoyed for the same reasons you enjoyed it. All right. Very nice. All right, let's let's move on now. Now here's another character demo. You got that one racked up, George? I do. Okay, let's listen to this. This is a slightly different take on a character demo, just so we can give it a little contrast. Kind of Balahan Vukain. Finally, warriors worthy of a combat walk before me. Wounded by bandits, almost died. Now please, save your increase for later. Yes? Give me a moment. Let me start from the beginning. It was up to me to do the invocation, for I was in the Count's service as a mage. More vagrants? Did I not tell you already that you'll get what you want? By Shaw's bones, I need more time. We came here from Black Marsh for business a week ago, and uh, we heard about stepping. You know stepping? So we wanted to see what it was all about. We were curious, you know. Hello, I'm Eldar, owner of Eldar's Junk Emporium and White Watch Tower. Hello, I'm Eldar, owner of Eldar's Junk Emporium and White Watch Tower. Hello, I'm Eldar, owner of Eldar's Junk Emporium at White Watch Tower. Hello, I'm Eldar, owner of Eldar's Junk Emporium at White Watch Tower. It's no you. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Roy, Roy, Roy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Roy. The first three that the guy did the same read the first three voices to me sounded you know almost identical um was that the same uh, voice actor as the what we were hearing before it i mean it was all the same no. voice actor right well oh, those were two those were two separate demos oh no this is one guy one one guy okay that was i one thought file. you meant the other <laughs> right uh he did you think it was possibly two guys because he's got the, no one of the spots was artificially slowed down and you could hear the resolution kind of aliasing and right. stuff mm-hmm. uh, i wasn't buying that 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 was in his, in his range or anything <sighs> a limited range uh you know uh, we don't want to talk about the lack of acting or you know um Technically, it didn't do anything for me. Um, it, it was bothersome, and then you know, or it wasn't. It wasn't entertaining. To Cliff's point, you know, I, I would go back and listen to that if I was, and I know Roy's in this position a lot, and I believe us. Um, people coming to him saying, you know, beat my demo. If if I would have that come across my desk to beef it up, I would go back and I'd pick one of those voices, just one. I picked the best one. Of, of everything that I heard and say, you know what? This is great. What yeah. else do you have? Right. What else can right. we do? Because I was hearing as good as it was, I was hearing pretty much the same, you know, guy over and over and over and over again. But you um, can do. Right. And accent, I'm, I'm no sh- accent. Yeah. I'm sure that if I sat with my eyes closed and really listened, I would start to hear differentiations. I don't have that time to do that. And it's got to knock me out right away. So, of all those that we heard, pick the best one, get some more stuff going on. Yeah. All right. Lower, lower your cam just a little bit, Cliff, because you're a tall guy. That's much. Better. There you go. Yeah. That, that, that helps. Now we're equal. Yeah. For me, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was the pacing. Everything felt slow. You wanted it to yeah. keep moving. Keep yeah. Moving, keep moving. Yeah. You wanted there to be a little bit more range from, from the slower, darker, deeper characters to a little bit more zany or a little bit higher pitched or whatever. You know, never yeah, can do a lot of voices. It just wasn't on a range, and and then the pacing yeah, I just felt don't too think slow. that I don't think that you can rely on the accent to cover uh, yeah. a lack of diction, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and and I think that I, I think that right. we were a little more concerned about the character than right, telling the, the story or, or the words, right, the, the right, actual right. words. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get to the next one here. Is this to alphabetical right. order? Okay, got it. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the next one we have here. This is a this is a commercial demo by somebody. And we have uh, some great questions coming in. By yeah, the way. we'll, we'll and we'll address we'll address some of these questions right after we go over this one. All right, here you go. It's the same wholesome, lightly sweetened toasted oat cereal, and now it tastes even better. You need hard to find ink in a multi pack in stock now at the lowest price possible. So, you go to Staples. This year, one out of three people over 65 will fall. 
Now you can have peace of mind with ADT Companion Services. So hurry in and get all this during Kia's Great May Sales Event. Ends May 31st. Nothing cleans your engine better than the new Chevron with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. Well, that was that was short and sweet. Yeah. I guess that, that runs to the question: What is the right length for a demo? You know, you know, chances are, unless you're amazing, it's not going to go past the first fifteen seconds anyway. So, you know, that's an interesting point there. But I like that all the clips were short, and yeah. it didn't leave me thinking: Can this guy maintain it? Right. I heard what I needed. And next, you know, there's there's the voice sam player. I wouldn't need a voice sam player when I heard this demo because it is next, 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 and you hear the next one. You know, um, I think there's somewhat of a limited range there. The production seemed okay. One of the spots uh, that wasn't buying the music it was a little, you know, cheesy library. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I think that demo was a little too short uh, as an right. overall length. It, it went by real quick. Um, it didn't bore me, but I'm not sure that the casting on a lot of the spots were correct. Yeah. And um, that's that's, and that's really important. It's, it's, it's everything. Um, if you are not right for the spot that you're reading, don't do it. Uh, okay, how do you know if you're right? Well, that's part of the art, guys. You know that That's what makes you an artist. Um, that's what makes a great director, is knowing what you need to read. Um, something that is miscast uh, sticks out to me as an error more than any benefit that it would have. And, you know, I start every demo, pop in to listen to, pop in, listen to me, Mr. Old Guy, right? Pop in the CD uh, that, that I click on to listen to. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm praying that it's going to be great. And then, you know, rarely does it start off weak, and by the end of the demo, I say, "Wow, boy, did that did that demo change my opinion from the first five seconds I heard it till <laughs> hearing it at the very end?" Yeah. You know, so um, again, uh, entertaining. Yeah, got to be entertaining like, and a right cast. Yeah, like like our good friend Eric Shepard says, you got to wow him right from the start. Oh yeah. You know, right I mean, the start. It, it can be, it might be a slow read. It might be a nice, you know, nifty kind of read. It doesn't have to be like exciting and powerful, but it has to be powerful as, you know, making sure that you're getting your point across. I like to use the All word right, compelling. Why don't we take it compelling? That's a good one. Yeah, All, right, we've got, we, All right. Here's a, here's a couple of audience questions. Devox, never short of a question. Uh, what would you guys do? Uh, what would you guys do to master uh, a demo to make it sound better? Like he was talking about the audiobook demo originally. Right? <laughs> Sometimes Cliff sends me his uh, demos and I <laughs> do my thing and I send them back and he likes it. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or I say, Roy, don't touch it. Just listen. But I can't. It's I not in my. Can. I know you, I know everything I send Roy, <laughs> he sends me back a remastered version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, Roy, just listen. Hey, are they pronouncing the name of the city right, Roy? That gives me an entire remix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if it's it, it, if you're recording in your home studio and you don't have any front end, or if you're uh, if you're gun shy because all the client says don't don't compress. All right. That, you know, they say don't compress because they've been burned. Somebody over compressed, then you can't undo it. You can always add a little compression. So if you know what you're doing, uh, a little a little compression can go a long way because your overall volume is going to cut. If you get those peaks down and you normalize, then your overall level is going to come up. But if I hear it, which is what Cliff is going to say soon, if I hear if I hear that compressor going, no, it's too much and don't give, don't put any. Yeah, I you hear that. Do and send it to send it to one of the four of us, and yeah. we'll we'll fix it. <laughs> I hear I hear the boost at three k. I hear the gate shutting down at forty five oh, dB. You know, I hear the compression at at, at, at a twenty five to one ratio. You know, and with a minus thirty threshold. In other words, basically, what I'm saying is that every single word yeah, becomes compressed. Yeah. Now, so, in other words, if if you don't know what something does, don't use it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, the, the the knob twisting doesn't work. It, yeah. it really doesn't. And you know what? You don't, you don't. Come on. 
have to. I mean, not with guys like, yeah. you know, that you're looking at these three guys right there, Dan George, yeah, about, about that stuff. You know, it, it's easier now. And it's more important that y'all know how to use it. It really is. Also, we had a, a fun discussion a, a week ago. Um, me, my personal opinion is you can process whatever you want. You can do whatever you want to your audio as long as I don't hear it. And that's fine. You know, uh, good sounding audio is good sounding audio. Whatever it takes for you to get there, that's your job. You know, and that's that's going to separate. And if you're going to adjust something, adjust one thing and listen. And then, you know, and just adjust that and get, let's say, do your EQ first. If you, you may not need any. All right. Let's say you need a little EQ. All right. And then try the compressor but don't change everything everything you keep changing things you'll get lost you'll your ears will fatigue out you won't know you'll you'll get to the point that it's different but is it better i don't know right. i can't tell anymore well here's the question that keeps popping up in the chat room here yeah. people keep asking what do we mean mm -hmm. when we say but is it better yeah yeah oh, what, what do we say what what do we say what do we mean when we say range if we're not showing range oh no. Uh, do we, you know, do we, are we hitting all the emotions and maybe this is cookie cutter and maybe not, but do I hear, first of all, do I hear your personality? And that's number one, number one. And number that's one. what's missing on a lot of first thing is I've got to hear when I put on a Dan Leonard, uh, voiceover demo, I better damn well hear this guy that I know and yeah. love, you know, um, oh, and then I need to hear, you know, a, a compassionate one. And then I need to hear a sexy one. And then I need to hear a, a perky one. And I need to hear all the emotions. I need to hear that that shows the range. Or you've got a lo lot of low stuff, but you also, have, you also have a higher range. You know, some of it's pitch, but, but it's, uh, it's the emotions. It's the different emotions. Agree. And, and if you choose one of those, make sure that you hit what Roy was talking about, you know, um, if you are going to do an authoritative read, make sure that you, that it is authoritative. And, and, you know, if you are going to do a comedy one, make sure that, you know, all of your ups and downs, your roller coasters, your stair steps, whatever you want to call them are being hit and being hit correctly. You know, when we hear a terrific voiceover, a lot of times we just take it for granted and you don't even really hear, wow, why is that so great? Two days ago, I'm watching a Rangers game, which was not so great, by the way. <laughs> and uh, those that have ever read any of my posts on Facebook now usually talk about the Rangers. I'm very <laughs> quiet about the Rangers this year. I know how our good friend Terry has been feeling the last couple of years. But I heard a Kia spot. And I, after the end of this, it was a Kia spot. No big deal. National Kia spot. I stopped. I rewound. I took my phone. I recorded it. I listened back and I listened over and over and over to this read. Mm. That was just it was spot on perfect because nothing st really stuck out. There was no, it wasn't trying to be anything other than exactly what it was. It was a beautiful read. Roy, I'll send it to you later tonight. Yeah. Here, it was just, I mean, for me to get out of my chair, which is hard to do anyway, um, you know, and, and to, rec to rewind and record this spot on my phone, it was, it was really something. And unless it's, unless it's a retail spot where obviously you're selling something, we don't want to hear the cell. You know, we want, we want warmth to be the cell. We want a smile to be the cell. Right. Uh, and those are the tools to use and not, not to hit words hard and to, you know, uh, voice over one oh one. Oh, well, let's raise the pitch on this word to, you know, it's too obvious when somebody's trying to sell. Yeah. Instead yeah. of yeah. just, you know, all right, let's, yeah, let's play one more here, and then we'll go into another break here. All right. Uh, this is um, another commercial demo. Here we go. <laughs> That's George's demo. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Looking for a delicious tasting boost of energy? Starbucks refreshers are made with real fruit, fruit juice, and green coffee extract. It's thirst-quenching natural energy you can feel good about. Luscious Orchid Cleansing Body Wash from Oil of Olay leaves your skin feeling clean, hydrated, and beautifully scented. Indulge yourself. The Nissan Leaf is 100% electric. No gas required, ever. 
see your Nissan dealer to find out how you can get more miles and more fun out of every kilowatt. Now, get all your favorite content with a single touch. Watch, read, listen, or browse in stunning HD. The Kindle Fire HD, starting at just $2.99. Bold, flavorful ingredients are the inspiration for the new Cantina Bell menu. Like tender, thick-cut steak, citrus herb marinated chicken, zesty rice and beans, fresh guacamole, and roasted salsa. Freshly prepared every day at Taco Bell. As a nationwide insurance member, you can count on you and your family being protected. Great value and friendly service means peace of mind just got even more peaceful. Join the nation and start saving today. All right. What's the length of that spot of that uh, demo? Uh, I knew you were going to ask me that. And the <laughs> I- I'll open it up and because uh, the re- and the reason I'm asking is I don't know that anybody's anybody's going to get to that last spot or maybe even the next to the last spot. Wow. I liked it early on. One it doesn't minute, matter seconds. to me that the first spot was uh, Starbucks because I bought it. And there was yeah. sound effects and, you know, it, it, all the mixes, all the, I heard all the range. I heard the range. I liked the production. Uh, it, I think that was a very good demo. I think you're right, Roy. You know, I don't know if anybody's going to get the end. It almost kind of reminded me of, of the new style of Saturday Night Live skits where it starts off the first minute of the skit is great. And then it just, it doesn't really know when to stop. And it just, yeah. Goes, one minute, right. 10 seconds. Um, I, it was one minute I, and 10 really seconds like, long. It I seemed did. longer. It seemed longer. It did but. seem longer. It did. Um, I don't know if maybe making some hard left, right turns within the demo might help it. Um, but I'll tell you, I don't think it really matters because I really liked what I heard. And Me the too. 15 seconds, that voice talent, made it to the right pile so congratulations yeah yeah i listened to, oh, go ahead dan yeah well no i was gonna say i i mean i liked it i mean like i like the voice quality to start with and and it catches it it, it grabs you when you first hear it and that's what it's got to do yes now there's a good female voice that works you know the production on quality on it was just right and, and and that's fine. You know, the fact that it ran 110 really wasn't a factor because by the time after 15, 20 seconds, you're like, okay, she, like you said, she's she sold, she's sold. And many times a minute is the right amount. So whether you lop off the last spot or as uh, Cliff suggested, maybe you make some other edits so that we get to that other flavor. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was good. It, it sounded familiar. It sounded professional, mm-hmm. and it sounded like she was bringing her talent rather than somebody telling her what to do. Yeah, and it's and yeah. and I was sold. I, I it sounded they sounded like just from a total layman because I am. I don't produce. It sounded like the real deal. It sounded real, like real spots. spots. Sounded like Absolutely. real spots. Even I'm sorry, though, George, you you scuttered right there. What did you say? It sounded, it what, sounded like the real deal. It yeah, was real it sounded spots. like the real deal. Spots. It yeah. sounded familiar. Yeah. Yep. All righty. All right. Let's take a quick break here and right. take some oxygen. And <laughs> originally, I wanted to take a, a cassette and hit it with a hammer for the for our promo. But you mean like this? <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. This one? No, no, no. I just Don't showed. Break I it. just showed the guy smashing a CD. You guys no, just you, didn't hear it. Oh, okay. You, you cracked I mean, the ribs. I, I actually found my old demo here that was on a cassette, but I am not going to play that because it was from 1985. Don't make me get an eight-track cartridge out. Oh, I will. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go find our eight-track cartridges, and we'll be right back here on East West cool. Audio Body Shop with our demo demo derby. Woo-hoo! We'll be right back. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. 
You're watching East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. They're nice guys, but every time I'm there, they never let me make water. So I'm going to go make water right now. I'm a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. And hopefully you had time yourself to go do that during that break. Uh, anyway, uh, it's our, our first annual Demo Demolition Derby or Demo Demo Derby. We're not exactly sure what to call it. All we know is that lots of people are watching, and this is fascinating. We got two of the best guys to talk about demos in our house tonight. Here at it's East our Audio passion. Radio. It's our passion. We live for this. Yeah. You, well, that's why you get up in the morning, because that's how you make the donuts. And why we don't go to sleep at night. <laughs> Do we, Roy? <laughs> no, we're chatting at two in the morning uh, on on Facebook. You know? Okay, all right. Let's let's go to another one here. This is a this is somebody's commercial demo. <laughs> Some, somebody we know. We won't mention any names. Uh, and then we're gonna do. Then we're actually gonna bring something that I did in here that Roy and I worked on. But uh, let's go to this first one for it right now. The Android-powered Samsung Behold 2 with thousands of apps and an LED screen to bring them spectacularly to life. Your phone should be a Samsung. You could hire a painter who accidentally drops a bucket of paint on your car or a plumber who saws through a pipe and forgets to turn off the water. Uh, has anybody seen Jason? He was going to jump in the swamp to cool off. I hope he saw the sign about the alligators. Making good wine is a skill. Fine wine and art. Robert Mondavi Private Selection Wines, Napa Valley, California. In this town, we shoot first and ask questions later. It begins with new pain or pressure in your chest. It may spread to your arm or back. It could be accompanied by shortness of breath, weakness, or nausea. These are symptoms of a heart attack. A Merrill Lynch Financial Advisor can help you plan, invest, and manage your assets. Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. That's why I stand at my desk, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, that was as professional yeah. as it gets. Yeah, man. That was really good. I'll tell you what. I did. Molly, it'll be your turn in a second. Um, <laughs> the, the one character that popped in the middle, although I'm preaching, changing things, that kind of took me a little bit off of the ride that I was on. Um, but I thought it was great. I mean, the, from, from the very beginning all the way through. Great range, yeah. Uh, good acting, good pacing, good character, good ownership of the copy. Um, I thought that uh, it sounded like a demo because of the minimal amount of production, but I think that that actually were his favorite because he's good. At, it showed me that he's good enough to carry it on his own, and that production is only going to augment the performance rather than kind of you know kick it up to where it needs to be. I, I agree on that little voice in the middle, but it does add to his range because he had some really high voices and some pretty medium low. And then this one was low, but it was too short. Can he maintain it? You know, why is it in there? I, I think it would it would distract a casting director to be then thinking, what was that? And miss possibly the, the beginning of the next spot. You don't want to do anything really jarring uh, sound quality wise on your demo because you don't want to surprise a casting director in that way. You know? Yeah. It, just from sure. a mastering standpoint, it, it needed a little mastering. Um, mm -hmm. There's a sound effect in there. Yeah. Like that sound effect of whatever that thing is. Right. That peaks above everything else. And right, that, again, it's not going to translate to most people that, that that's an issue, but it, it, it does need to be kind of mastered. It and that's a, so easy to, that's so easy to fix because you could yeah. go in there by, by hand and just take that one thing down. It would still sound just as loud. Yeah. I'd be the oh, lazy yeah. guy and just limit the thing, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I mean, if, if the guy's using Pro Tools, certainly, you know, clip game, highlight, mm -hmm. you know, EE -E on both sure. sides, pull it down. Right, and, exactly. And sure, sure. But it was it was a, a very very good demo, picky. very, very good demo. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure he's I'm sure he's booking from it. I'm sure he is because I we know he's booking from. Is it. Is this next guy booking stuff? Uh, yeah, here and there. Uh, yeah. Now, 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 the question here now is: Should you produce your own demo? And of course, having done this for years and years and years, I know that I need somebody professional to produce my demo, and uh, and to direct me and to pick the spots that they think are going to work for me and i and i redid my demo 
uh, last year. And uh, a couple of the a couple of the selections, uh, when it came back, I'm, I remember my wife saying, "Where's your voice?" So anyway, let's. Well, so I, I gave it to Roy, but let's hear the original two spots uh, that I did that were like, "We got we got to fix this somehow." And uh, and then what Roy and I did to them to make them work a little bit better. Okay, so let's roll the first one. So you got a Chevy Malibu. Nice. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy three years in a row and an estimated 33 miles per gallon highway. All for under 23000 And what does your neighbor have? A bad case of car envy. Yeah. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song. Every day's a good day at JCPenney. Our Levi's Denim Bar, a bold new look, and yes, fair and square pricing day. will make your day. It's a good day from morning till night. The new JCPenney. Yes, all right. Now the fir- now the first thing I noticed with that was like, well, you can't hear my voice very well, and on the second one, it breaks all the rules of any production. That is talking over a vocal. So we needed to change the the vocal there because there's plenty of riff in there to to, to make it work. So I said, Roy, <laughs> help, so, help. Let's let's. I mean, I knew what to do with it, but it was it was in Pro Tools files, and I wasn't going to screw around with that. So I let I let the master master it. Oh, thank you. So, you so let's let's. Here's here's what he did with it. So you got a Chevy Malibu. Nice. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy three years in a row and an estimated 33 miles per gallon highway. All for under 23000 And what does your neighbor have? A bad case of car envy. Yeah. Yes, it's a good day. Every day's a good day at JCPenney. Our Levi's Denim Bar, a bold new look, and fair and square pricing will make your day. It's a good day from morning till night. The new JCPenney. Nice. Now, it wasn't just a matter of bringing, some people might say, oh, well, you just lowered the music. No, no it wasn't, it wasn't no, just No, you recut that. the music. You totally re-edited the, the music. The second track. one, the second one I did find, I, you know, I found it like up what just was right. supposed to be a karaoke version of the same song and lined it up with the vocal version. But no, I mean, in the first song, in the first uh, spot, um, it was just way too much music and uh, Dan's voice wasn't coming through, so I EQ'd his voice. I let the music hit. I brought it down. I pumped it up in a couple of key yeah. spots where there was a hole for it, and that's what that's what we do. You know. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, it, it really um, opened up the performance as well because there were subtleties that I didn't hear on the first round that I really heard come out of the second round. And, you know, it's almost like kind of putting the, the reins on Dan to say, hey, you can only do this much. But when you take away, you know, all the stuff that's swirling around it, well, there's the performer, there's the nuances, there's the texture, there's the voice, there's the read. Yeah, really, really so, good, Roy. So to well the done. producer's credit, I, you know, I think the copy was good. I think, yeah. you know, the direction was good. Yep. You know, it just needed a, a little better uh, mixing, that's all. Needed to be taken out in the back and aired out. Yep. Aired <laughs> out. <laughs> out through some. Yep. Yeah, this is yeah. what aired something out. that engineers know how to do when they mix music. When they mix dense tracks of guitars and instruments right. and keyboards and synths, and there's a vocalist singing over top, they know exactly how to carve out a hole for the voice. Now, this is a much easier production to mix. It's a music track and a voice, but that's what engineers know how to do. They can have all that texture and have the voice still float right over top. And especially the voiceover like, demo, it's really all about the I'd voice. love to show you a screen capture of the automation that went on because the music's going, you know, up and down all over the place sure. around the words so that it's always there and supportive, you know, right. of his voice. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I actually and I actually took that first one where it goes bang, you know, and yep. I and I actually took that off at the beginning of my demo. Oh, okay. And moved it because the the, the second read was was a, a more subtle read of the the, the more type of uh, emotional stuff that I that I do more narration hmm. type stuff than being a character. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right. Uh, Should let's we do more see. questions what? or go right to a demo? Yeah, let's, yeah, go, let's we, go. Let's go into the, some of the questions here because yeah. I'm kind of scanning over. There's some really good. We got stuff a ton of them racked up here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Karen O'Brien asks, "How Hi, long? Does, yeah. How long does it normally take to do a demo from first contact to finished demo?" Oh man. Oh man! <laughs> it's, it is, there's and a lot of, uh, <laughs> and that's assuming that you're ready to do your demo, or is this from coaching to, you know? 
let's say, let's say it's from let's say it's from deciding upon who you want uh, help with to create your demo. All right, yeah. you've done the coaching, you've done all that. Um, it could be from three hours to two months. Now, I like to do something <laughs> a little bit different, or longer for that. Yeah. But I like to do something a little bit different. I like to, when I coach a demo, I like to work one hour at a time, and I'll do one spot, one piece. We'll work for an hour, take two days off, three days off, come back again. Take a week off, come back, do another one. Take two days off, come back and do another one. Um, to put all of your eggs into one three-hour basket is terrifying. And to think that, you know, somebody could be spending a real good, wonderful chunk of change going in and putting it all on the line for two, three hours. What if they didn't sleep well? What if the kid came home late and they were worried or the, the, the nectarine that they ate from sprouts was a little green? You know, any of these, these things can, can alter your performance. So I like, since a demo is, should be an example of what you can do, you know, over a number of years in your experience, let's produce a demo not in three hours. Let's take a week, a month, two months to to produce something that's that's really neat and diverse and different. And you're not going to get that at any of these demo factories. Nobody will take that amount of time because they have a fixed price. They can't keep having you come back and come back and come back and take an hour at a time. Uh, the price point doesn't allow itself for that. You also, Cliff, produce a little differently. You like to produce a whole spot. Yes. And I, then treat it like old school. Now you've got all these hold spots. Let's pick the best of each whole spot and let's cut your demo old school. And I, 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 like I that. think that I think that kind of my philosophy is that I don't really try to cut demos. I try to cut spots that, that are demo demos. that are demo and, worthy. Yeah, they're demo worthy. And sometimes if I cut 10 spots with a talent, I'll use eight. I saw in a, a question, you know, how many different segments should be in a demo? You know, there's no right answer as long as it's entertaining and it keeps the, the uh, listener. And it's not samey. And it's not the same thing, you know. So uh, another neat thing about doing something over a length of time is that you grow. And with each session we do, uh, you learn a little more or you see things maybe a little different, it, whether I will teach it to you or you figure it out on your own in listening back. How cool is it to work for an hour and then spend two days listening to it? And you know what? If I'm not around and you hear something you want to do, you want to change, you want to punch in a word or this, or do that right on because yeah. your demo producer is not going to be with there with you to hold your hand for your entire career. You take the initiative, go in there, listen to what you're doing, live with it, live with one spot, one section for four or five days. It's got to be better. Each one of those sessions is a, a, a highly concentrated coaching session that's right to really Focus. treat it like here okay you landed this gig let's do it let's do it and if it takes you know plenty of times you do a spot it does take a half hour to an hour till you you know till you get every nuance that you're looking for until it's demo worthy you know yeah. um i i i like to break it up into two or three sessions if possible but a lot of people are impatient and they just want to come in here. I've got all my scripts, you know, if they're giving great, great, great reads. Okay. But you know, and the way I work people, the one I direct them, they tire, they get tired pretty quickly yeah, because I work them hard. I don't, I'm not a satisfied client who people send me spots. They say, here, make my demo. And all the spots, even the, I, I don't care that they aired there. Who cares? They, who cares about these spots? Nothing is popping out and grabbing me. We want spots that, that are killer. They have to be. The competition is too great, and everybody else's demo is great. So yeah. we, we really have to top it. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is you've got to be it, – it's, it's always best to work with somebody you know and trust – who is good at what they do. Like I trust Cliff and I trust Roy and I trust my coaches. And I've worked with a couple of very good coaches and I've done demos with them. And they said, okay, we're going to do this spot. Let's work on this. Let's make this perfect. Of course, when you're in the studio and you get a gig, you've got to be able to reproduce that. And right. It's, right. so they've, they've got, you know, a coach has got to be confident enough, enough to know that you're going to look at that copy and you're going to get it next time. Uh, you know, if you get hired to do something based on that particular one, and I've been hired a couple of times based on, 
amazingly, the last spot on my demo, which I find fascinating, uh, do the voice you did on the end of your demo there. You know. uh, <laughs> Go, go figure. Um, you know, well, and of course, it's one of my favorite types of voices to do. But you've got to be able to reproduce it. You've got it's yes, not just yes. doing it on a demo isn't going to carry the day. You've got to be able to. But then, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> that's something that's really important that we're doing. We're reworking the educational program at Edge right now, and um, one thing that we're really concentrating on is making sure that those that do come through the program. Okay, could could p- potentially have a career in voiceover, and it's like one thing that they're going to work on really is to is sort of a, a three tier rating: red, yellow, green. If you got a red light, it's because you have something that's going to keep you from advancing your career right now. It could be a speech impediment. It could just be a, a severe accent that you, it would cost you know months, if not years, of training to fix. Things like that. Then, then, then there's like a yellow that's, you know what, there's some potential here. Would you like to, you know, continue the education process and see if you can improve? And then a green light level that is going to be like, you know what, this person does have, you know, true potential. And that's something that we're going to be doing here moving forward. We've been doing it for a while, but it's going to be really kind of like very clearly cut. Um, and, you know, I've being part of Edge now for over a year, I've been really concerned about raising the quality of our demos considerably. And that's, you know, the demo is also going to be coached by the coach who coaches the student through the process, you know, these are things that should be obvious, but they aren't necessarily done, you know, and, uh, I love your concept cliff of you're, you're, you're directing a spot and Mm -hmm. then we're getting a demo from it. That's an awesome concept. And also thanks. Also, because I do most of them, you know, being in Dallas, um, and I do have a full-time job, so I don't really kind of move around too much. Um, I, when I'm doing a, a demo, somebody, the first thing that we cover, of course, obviously, is their history and their education and their ability. But to have the audio quality at their house, once they've got that, they have all the dry audio right there in front of them. Yeah. So it's not like they're going to a studio and then begging the engineer to, in three weeks when he remembers to send you your dry audio, if it even still exists. Everything that we record and everything that we work on, you've got at your disposal 24-7. You yeah. wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, my God, now I know what what needed to be there. You're not holding anything hostage? No, gosh, yeah. no. No. God, no. I don't Shouldn't want that be. responsibility. I Heck got no. kids. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, whoever George, you hired, you- to, whoever you hired to produce your demo, I would hope that they would give you, give you all the raw files, give you the tracks. Yeah. It's, it's your I'm, demo. Yeah. 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 I, I don't want that responsibility. Two two points I want to bring up. Uh, I had a student in here today who uh, went through a demo factory thing, and I didn't realize this, but she said they made me read to time. In other words, somebody had a stopwatch and said, this segment of your demo needs to come in at 14 and a half seconds. Why are you putting a time pressure? You know, like they had formulated that the demo to be a minute, this one has to be 14 seconds, and this one has to be 10 seconds. What the hell? <laughs> you know what? They, somebody That's, told them that, and they have no other material to offer, I guess. I don't know. It sounds like focusing on something ridiculous. When I send out auditions, yeah. the, I make it very clear, do not time this to 30. Yeah. You know, um, because what in an audition, I'll put in multiple things. I'll put in a disclaimer. I'll put in prices. I'll put in terms. Terms. I'll put in incentives, but um, you know, one of the 14 points of automotive, I want to hear all of those. If it runs 38 seconds, I want to hear interpretation. Don't right. give me, don't, don't scrunch it to make it there. Look, clip, I got it in a 30, but I lost the read. Yeah. Yeah. People, people, well, they, they told me you need, you know, look, I can do a fast disclaimer. I don't care that you, that's great. That's great. If we yeah, need you, it, you can, you can get it, but I want to hear the read. <laughs> Take yeah. your time. I want to hear the acting. I want to hear the story. I'm not, not I'm not in a hurry. Don't you be yeah. in a hurry. Right. The other thing is um, don't be embarrassed. If you've had a demo made and you don't like it, uh, bounce it back to the demo producers and or call me or Cliff and see if we can resurrect it for you. And part of the problem there is you've already spent a, a million dollars on your demo. And now you're not happy with it. So you have to 
make sure you're happy from the source. And if you can't get satisfaction, then you know we we can help you. Um, but don't don't be embarrassed. It's probably you know pretty much it's not your fault uh, that you don't like your demo. Uh, you know you were misguided or. You know, Roy, have you gotten a, a, a mind? I'm sure you do, but I just kind of want to bring this out. I'm what? just adding one or two updating, updating your demo. Take oh yeah. Your, that's what I mean. Something that's, that's still 70% relevant yes. in today's market. That's still great, but, but you know but what? It missed, it missed, it's missing something in the range. Sexy right. is missing. Right. Or happy. Is, something's missing. Yeah, yeah. Or intrigue. So let's just do, let's add, let's take off these spots that are samey. And let's really show more range. I've done that, uh, you know, three, three or four times this month. Now, how neat would it be if Roy did one and I did one and then you put them together? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, they're two different directors, different sounds, um, yep. and more of a real world situation. You know, different directors. You're going to learn from every director you work with, good That's or right. bad. Ain't that right, Roy? That's <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> good or bad. Yes. Oh, my days in LA doing animation for many, many a year. <laughs> the best. And what the hell are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, you there know, is, it, yeah, there, there is somebody who actually does know who he's talking about or what he's talking about and who he's talking about because he's been around a while. And that is our sponsor, Segway Hogan. Hogan. Great segue. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Get I'm a professional. Headphones. Don't try this at home the way I'm doing it at home. And we recognize uh, that. Uh, the, yeah. Anyway, Harlan's got all the stuff you need to do voiceover. We're talking about demos and stuff. He doesn't produce demos. He does voiceover himself. He is a voice actor and a writer. And he knows, because he's been doing it a long time, he knows the kind of stuff you need to be doing voiceover in 2014. And he's got the stuff you need to do it. Such as like the Vox Pop Harlan stop. Hogan's signature series headphones. There they are. Yeah, or or the, right on cue. Or the, Nicely done. Oh, yeah. Uncle. Oh, sorry, Roy. I didn't have you on camera then. I was preparing my own shot. Oh, oh, oh there. Show there's them there. again. Right, no, put, put Roy on camera there, if you, unless you already have. You can't talk because it switches back to you. Oh, okay. All right. How about now? Did it switch to me? Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to talk. You can't narrate while I have a picture. All right. One of, one of the technology. One of the, small, the small little drawbacks of Zoom, but all good. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, the headphones are great. He's got the VO one a voice voiceover uh, microphone, mm-hmm. which is a great mic. Uh, I, I was showing off something that's cheap because oh, okay. we can't, like, like a, and we're like not all screen? looking for expensive stuff. How about a pop right, go back screen, to the pop screen for twenty bucks? If you guys have bought pop bucks. screens, they usually suck. They are. I like Harlan's pop screen. Yeah, I bought one. They're, they're, they're the goosenecks limp. It doesn't stay where you put it. The clamp it. is and, made like crap. And this is, is that wire mesh, right? This is a wire mesh. Now, you know, a lot of people of two minds about mesh versus nylon, but if you like wire, this is great. You can clean it. You can, you know, clean it off relatively easily. And uh, it's pretty <laughs> transparent. And it's got a lifetime guarantee. For twenty bucks, wow! I mean, come on, keep and it's on got free, and keep on using it. free Prime, free <laughs> Amazon Prime shipping, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, twenty bucks. So uh, it's, it, those things matter. I mean, when you have a home studio, having the right little doohickeys really makes a freaking difference, man. <laughs> it really does. I've got the headphone hook, you know. Yeah, and I and I put those headphones on there. The 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 be more you become professional as a voice actor, the more those little those little things really matter, and that's the yeah. kind of stuff that Harlan's got on that website. I mean, I've just, I've been spending years sort of curating my own shopping list online, you know, of these random bits, you know, because it takes years to find them all, but Harlan's done it for you. It's it's all in one place. Just go there, voiceoveressentials.com. dot com. Yeah, that's, thanks, Harlan. That's all, you, that's all you need to know. Go in there; they'll take care of you. You get the best stuff. You don't like it? Tough. Send it no, back. they will actually take care of you and make sure you uh, you you are totally satisfied right. with your purchase. Thanks a lot, Harlan. You have been with us for a 151 episodes. And oh, going it's strong. a record. My goodness, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a record because that's only how long we've been on. Anyway, all right, let's move on to the next one here. Uh this is this is it just says LB demo. This one I think is actually pretty good. All right, here we go. 
And I need to make sure I have the right shot. So the cues and here we go. Luxury doesn't totally describe it, nor does elegance. Opulence? Maybe. How about indulgence? Now let's get in closer. That's good news for your cat. Great news for your canary. What if all the things you really love about California just left? One day you woke up and they just weren't there. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. With fun fares starting at just $49 each way. Jeans getting a little snug in all the wrong places? Get them let out at LA Fitness. To those who pull the all-nighters. For the deliberate insomniacs. The thinkers. The makers. The doers. The movers and shakers in the night. We're First Medical 24-7. Yeah. The more you compare, the more you know you want a Honda. At your Utah Honda dealers. As told throughout the ages of time. It's an epic story of innocence, discovery, and life beginnings. Okay, that's it, I think. All right. All right, now, good sounding voice. He has uh, some range. He, has, he had some, some definite range. Of course, he threw a Southwest spot in the middle of that. And just see the, just see the face. <laughs> <laughs> and what about... What about I don't the car th- spot there, Cliff? <laughs> I don't think, think that? The, I don't think he's featuring his money voice. Yeah, I heard it three quarters into the demo. Mm-hmm. That the, when I that's when I said, "Wow, okay, this is an identity." The other the stuff at the front was very very good. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a very good demo, very well produced, good good material, sounded great. But that style of reading is rather common. And then he broke into this kind of a, a little bit of a higher register. And wow, I, I woke up. So when I heard the, the first couple minutes, or uh, whoa, excuse me, first couple seconds of, okay, I'm with you. And then bam, came back to this new voice. Um, I really liked. And, and I think that uh, that might be something I'd like to hear more of rather than the stuff up front. Or, or possibly just a resequence and lead re-sequence. with, or at least the second spot. If the spur, first spot grabs you, and even maybe the first spot that was on there was the second spot, and then you immediately go to your signature voice, right? Early, earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's the best way to showcase, uh, you know. There was a lot of range, so I think it's maybe just a resequence. Yeah, I think so too. I would like to have heard that a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. I would have paid more attention to the stuff that I spaced out on if I would have heard that a little bit earlier. Maybe hoping that only, if only, just to hear it again or to hear a different variation of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, good stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, de- definitely talented. De- definitely uh, good stuff. Yeah. Well, this this has been a lot of fun, gentlemen. Um, you know, getting a little late. We have a couple more questions I wanted to cover here because they're important things that you have to consider when doing your demo. Uh, and that is, you know, and J. Christopher Dunn asks, do all samples in a demo need a music bed? And then following that up, Shelley Avellino asks, how important is the choice of music in a demo? Well, having been a radio production director, let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> it's it. music is just about everything. I mean, you've got it's you, you, you got to pick the right music for for a spot it's, yes. it's something I, I knew i was very good at that when i when i was a, one of the reasons i ended up as production director is you've got to go no, 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 no. ah this goes with this it's it's a talent it's something that you, you've, you've got to be you've got to develop an ear for and it's not just music underneath spot like you hear in some station in you know in the middle of kansas all not to say that some stations in the middle of kansas aren't very good um you know, especially a few people in Kansas, but uh, Cliff, what music? I mean, with what you do with car <coughs> spots, excuse me. Music is is pretty everything. Important. Music, yeah. the tempo of the music, the key of the music mm-hmm. uh, is important. If de- if music behind a demo is a nineteen ninety nineteen ninety five network music library that we've all heard, Street Fight, Guns a Blazing, you know, all these all these music beds that we've all heard. It's going to sound dated. Um, music libraries, all of your music taken from one music library, there's going to be a resemblance from one track to the other. Um, music's very important, mixing it up. Now, let's talk about music without or, or a, a demo, without part music. of your demo without music. I think it's awesome. I mean, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear uh, some of the older readers that I have break in 
to just some really warm, deep, dark voices and then come out of it. Uh, again, sequencing is very important, and that's where the creative part comes in, the mixing uh, background, uh, the music background comes in. Roy's had a thousand years mixing records. Uh, I think that's very, very important, guys, when picking your demo uh, engineer or mixer, make sure that they're a musician because uh, being a musician is very, very important. But Wait you hear Cliff play, play that guitar, <laughs> I'm telling you. Just ask me. Those light strings. Good Lord. Oh, yeah. sevens, if they still make them. I thought music, you said tens. Music is super, no, uh, nines if we could. Okay. Uh, but but music is, is ultimately important. I don't know if it is the breaking point. I don't know if it's the deal breaker. But I think that it will separate the uh, demo mill from the truly creative demo. I think on a on a narration demo or a medical demo, sometimes you can use no. I don't think maybe for the intro, but, 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 but today. Yeah. Um, oh, and but then fade it out and have the pure or, voice. You know, just an establishing shot. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then you're gone. An establishing yeah, music that I mean. is, is is okay. Okay. I think to have one or two uh, naked voice spots on the demo would be great because you could have one where you're really into the mic and we can hear the, new, you know, we can hear the richness and the nuance of your read and of your voice quality. And then maybe one that's just, you know, uh, hey, Cliff, did you know that, you know, just a, just a uh, conversational, just me and you one on one kind of a read um, with it doesn't need any produ production. Uh, it's just, just tell me the story. And it's also twofold. It gives your uh, engineer or you gives the person listening, a, you know, what does your room sound like? You know, with, without all the uh, extra frequencies going on, what does your dry microphone sound like? Right. Which is why an audition is so similar mm -hmm. to a demo and how essential uh, high quality broadcast audio is to getting that uh, getting that on and that is a subject that's going to be a subject for another night last question of the night from our our wonderful uh chat room monitor anthony getting the one everybody should ask what should someone expect to pay to have a commercial demo produced the better you are the cheaper it is <laughs> How's that? Yeah, because we'll be in and out of there quickly, right? That's right, man. I've worked with I've worked with people that are so like, okay. Now, what do you want to do for the next forty five minutes? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Let me tell you about my daughter. You know, so um, <laughs> which is my favorite subject. Flat um, stuff's tough, but, isn't it? Right, because it's like you want to, you want to, you want them to know what it's going to cost, but it's yeah. like you just said, Hi, you, you can't possibly predict their. <laughs> Their I ability am. to get to the finish line, to get so to the beautiful. finish line, you know, could take hours. <laughs> but look, but, at, uh, look uh, at that face. Yeah, she just got her hair cut. She even has a little bit of purple highlights in her hair. <laughs> it just gets more and more beautiful That's every day. Trish's league or Melissa's league. Every yeah. day. She doesn't right, need a demo. Her, yeah, demo so. her demo is herself. But, uh, yeah. no, that's, yeah. I think well, that's well, going to well, be What was the question? Yeah. The question, the question was, is how much, how should, much it, should it cost? Should it, how much do you charge? I, you know what? I would say anywhere from 500 to 1500, you know, depending upon really what's required. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I, I, go ahead, Roy. I, no, I think, I'm take notes it, on this. you know, to, to freshen, to freshen, somebody's like to change out two or three spots. I think, I think 500 is, is, you know, is acceptable. Uh, a full blown, uh, just a commercial demo might be a thousand. And if it's an animation demo that needs a lot of, a lot more research on, uh, and a lot more directing and a lot more, uh, sound design, maybe 1500. I know there are many out there that just blanket charge 1500. Uh, so yeah. in certain, but do, yeah, but do not, they give you 1500 worth of their time? Well, I don't know if you have to spend extra money remixing it. I don't know if you. <laughs> if we if we hear from them, apparently not. Apparently not. Uh, so I want to say something. What of all the demos, and I've already picked mine, but which one stands out? Which one do you still remember uh, from the show tonight? The girl, the woman's uh, demo, yeah, Diana. Yeah, yeah. I Oops. you know I almost closed my eyes and I heard I could hear those spots coming out of a TV set. It's she was so know. good. We should say your name. Yeah, go ahead. Diana yeah, Burtzell. That was, that was, yeah. and, she, and she just left too. Is Diana She Burtzell. just she left the chat. Oh, yeah, okay. she just did leave. Oh, it was, 
Damn. So, but we love her anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. late. You know, it's late, guys. Go yeah, yeah, we've been on for an hour and 40, 30, 30 minutes. But, uh, well, yeah, an, no, hour, I, an hour and a half because we were about 12 minutes yeah, there was, the, yeah. I, We weren't, this was not a competition, but that was the one that stuck out. Like, yeah. Once I heard that one, I was thinking, all right, there's going to have to be a really stellar one after to that, beat that one. to beat yeah. that one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was. And it for was bonus terrific. points, who produced it? Do we do we, do any of us well, know? It says chat room says Mark Cashman did it. Mark Cashman did it. Yeah. All right, Mark. Good job, Mark. Yeah. Well Bravo. done. Who is a great yeah. coach? Yeah, Perhaps one of the best coaches out there. He great, deserves great props director. He really knows how to knows how to get out of you what you what you got to do there. So mm-hmm. you know, go over on very over cool there too. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, a special thanks, of course, to our guests, Uncle Roy Yokelson and Clifford Zellman, Antland Productions. Thank you. you know, these guys can help you out when it comes to uh, this type of stuff with demos and direction and stuff like that. So uh, they can they can reach they can reach Antland. Antland what, what's your email address? Yeah, Antlandproductions.com. Dot com. Cliff. Yep. Kalifu at airmail.net. Kalifu with a K. K-A-L-I-F-U. F is in Frank U is in Unicorn at airmail.net. Kalifu. Is that, that like was, a Yiddish word or something? And no, there, that was, I studied Mandarin Chinese <laughs> oh, no. a thousand years ago in college, and that was uh, my given name. But, oh, uh, right. yeah, and Cliff at Radio Vision, Inc., I-N-C dot com. Or, Alrighty. or Facebook. Or something. Or, yeah. you know, or just or, call or, me. Y'all just, know my just, number. Yeah, yell, yell out his name. Cliff! And I'll be there. <laughs> on any <laughs> forum on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't log into the chat room because I'm on a computer and I don't remember my Facebook and I was going to log on, but I was reading everybody and great questions, you guys, and, and yeah. hello to everybody that joined us. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for making this first go round with a demo, yeah. demo derby yeah. successful. Demo, we'll demo definitely derby. be doing this every year. Yeah. That women, we need more women to send their stuff in, but a Please, woman won fun. tonight. So that makes up. That there you very go. Fast hour and 45 minutes. It, uh, it was, it was great. All righty. And of course, we'd like to thank our wives for whom none yes. of this would ever be possible. Well, it probably would be possible, but not in this particular house. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, and of course, uh, Jack DeGaulle for doing all the work on our uh, 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 the show logs. All the notes from the show tonight will be there on our on our uh, our our page and on and our, our our YouTube uh, uh, site. I'm starting to sound like Obama. Bop, bop, uh, uh, bop, 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 bop. And uh, also, uh, who else do we need to thank? Lee Penny. Lee Penny, of course. Yeah. For all the work that he does with our, our podcast. That's right. And you can Catherine hear it. C. And Kathy Curtin, our wonderful oh, yeah, who got this all together. And uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we've got a couple of great shows. Next week, Rudy Gaskin's going to join us. Ooh. Talking about uh, the what is it? What are the awards? Voice called? Arts Awards. Voice Arts Awards. You know, we'd like to win. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe having him on the show. Will you got to butter up, R- Rudy. That's all. Yeah. So say some nice things about Joan. Right. Yes. Well, we, we we've had her on, and she was wonderful. How yeah, can you not great. say nice things about Joan? I know. Yes, and then uh, we're going to be dark for a week while I travel to Southern California, and then I'm traveling uh, too. The- but don't tell my wife yet; it's a surprise. Uh, shh, 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 shh. Don't tell anybody. I want to do a quick. I want to do a quick shout out to Ed V. Um, thanks for tuning in, Ed, and I would like to talk to you soon. Okay, he's there somewhere. And uh, and uh, then uh, Dave Quavasi will be joining us on August 11th. He's Everybody's got a book that just came best out. Buddy, he's the guy that does the voiceover <laughs> on our intro. And oh. he's our best buddy. So, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And somehow we're going to get him on. He's he's going to sneak in between news stories. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> he's going to be on and go. Well, oh, yes. There's a donkey fire in Red, Red Rock Canyon, but um, anyway, that's only people from Las Vegas <laughs> would know that one. Uh, so that's going to do it for us tonight. Thanks for joining us for our first demo demo derby. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. I'm George Whitam in the West. I'm thanks Uncle Roy in the East. And I'm Cliffy right in the middle. Yeah. And thanks to all our sponsors, of course, Harlan and and Thank uh, you, Harlan. and Voiceover Extra. And of course, Edge Studios for getting us our bandwidth, which was which got better as the night went on. Yeah. Anyway, all of us together are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body Shop. Body Shop. East West that's Central right. Audio Body Shop. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Great fun, you guys. Bye, kids. Bye, kids.